This video is going to be a little bit different because I can't show the video I'm talking about because it's combat footage and YouTube will come down on me like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. I'm also going to ask you to do something that I never do, and that is share this video with other people so they can understand what is and is not a war crime. Fight misinformation with knowledge. Now, I had John, a former Air Force combat rescue flight surgeon, email me about a disturbing but very slickly produced video that showed Ukrainian tanks attacking Russian trench lines. I can't show you the video, but I'll link to it in the pinned comments and the, uh, in the description below. A lot of people have been tossing around the word war crime because of what the tank was doing, but I think a lot of people don't know what the word war crime actually means or how it's defined. And a lot of times, if it seems ugly, people call it a war crime. Or even they say, well, it should be a war crime. I've had people ask me if attacking sleeping soldiers is a war crime. It's not. Is attacking wounded soldiers a war crime? It depends, but believe it or not, sometimes it's not. Is using white phosphorus or fuel air explosives a war crime? No. And cluster munitions, that's not a war crime either. There are some treaties about them, but the use of cluster munitions is not in the Geneva Conventions. So, the Geneva Conventions, or GC, is the very basic minimum set of behaviors that is acceptable by humanity. You can't summarily execute prisoners. You can't attack civilians intentionally. You can't attack hospitals or anything that is protected under the symbol like a Red Cross, Red Crescent, or now they got this red diamond thing. So that's the minimum. In addition, you have the law, the LOAC, or the Law of Armed Conflict. This goes beyond the Geneva Conventions with things like proportionality, of course. Uh, for example, one thing you tend to see in LOAC training is this analogy of trying to crack a walnut that is resting on a clay pot. The walnut represents the adversary. The clay pot represents the civilians in the area. Would you use a claw hammer to crack the walnut, or would you use a sledgehammer? Because one of these weapons has a greater potential for damaging the clay pot than others. So, all of that can be overridden by something called the SRO, the Standard Rules of Engagement. So this restricts things even more, the rules of engagement. Now, the rules of engagement might say that attacking targets of historical significance require permission of a brigade commander or above, or... The, uh, the row might say that weapons of over 50 caliber are not allowed in this city. Now, it's already bad enough that every soldier, whether Russian or Ukrainian, has a cell phone, and they're uploading stuff without context. So now we've added drones to the mix. Now not only do we not have context, but we've got a bird's eye view of the event with no audio to kind of clue you in on what's going on. As warfare evolves into more drone combat, we're going to start seeing footage coming out that will be second-guessed by people who weren't actually there. And there's going to be a lot of it, because just about every weapon system that uses a TV screen can have that information recorded and saved for later. So... We may need to update the Geneva Conventions to reflect on what we can and can't do with drones. All that being said, in the video I'm talking about, there's a Ukrainian tank that just bum rushes this uh, Russian position, and they just keep pounding these dudes with main gun rounds. And eventually, one of the Russian soldiers throws a grenade back, but the grenade is ineffective. So the question is, was it a war crime to continue to shoot at the Russians in the trench? So now we have to implement a three-part test, and this is the part of the video that I really want you to share. So here's the first step of the test. Test one, were the troops hors de combat? Hors de combat essentially means were they out of action due to illness or injury? Now, if they're sitting in a hospital that's clearly marked, yeah, they're, they're hors de combat. But prepare yourself for a shot. Just because you're wounded doesn't mean that you're hors de combat automatically. Wounded soldiers can still fight. Wounded soldiers have still fought. So now, it, that being said, if you assault an objective and there's an unconscious, badly wounded soldier who's still breathing and you finish him off, yeah, that's a war crime. There were de combat. You have to render medical aid. So don't do that. So what's the difference between someone who was lightly wounded and who could still fight and someone who was already combat? I don't know, but a jury can always tell. The fact is that you're probably not going to be able to tell if someone has already come back from drone footage. 
You have to be on the ground meters away from that guy and make a command decision. So that's the first test. And just know that if you're looking at footage without context, you're probably going to be wrong. Test two. Are the soldiers clearly marked medical personnel? This means armbands, helmet markers, are the evacuation vehicles clearly marked? Are they only being used for medical evacuation? That's a big one too. There's a difference between medevac, where you have a vehicle that just does medical evacuation, and casevac, which is any old unmarked vehicle that's pressed into service. You cannot attack a clearly marked medevac. You can attack a, a casevac vehicle that is not marked. Medical personnel are non-combatants. Now, they can carry small arms to defend themselves, but if you see a red cross, red crescent, red diamond, they are out of the game. Civilians are out of the game as well, as long as they're not acting as partisans or saboteurs, and usually partisans will have some kind of marking. So apply that test to any footage you see. If there aren't civilians or, or they're clearly marked medical personnel, then we go to the third test. Are the soldiers actively trying to surrender? This is actually a pretty easy one. Are their hands up? Have they cast away their arms and ammunition? The kind of posture right here displayed by these Iraqis from the first Gulf War is a pretty good indicator that they're surrendering. There is <laughs> no doubt that these soldiers are surrendering. No weapons, hands up. Their posture is, we are out of the game. Continuing to fight is not a good indicator of surrender. So if someone surrenders, they're out of the game. You have to treat them humanely and evacuate them from the area. And technically, you have to let them keep their personal protective equipment like helmets, gas masks, and personal effects like their ID cards, pocket money, and pictures of their family. That's actually in the Geneva Conventions. Uh, so today, personal protective equipment might extend to things like body armor, but that might be following the spirit of the law since the Geneva Convention was written before modern body armor. But Supposedly, you have to let them keep their helmets and their gas masks all personal effects. So whenever you watch a video, apply this three-step war crime test. Are the troops already combat? Are the soldiers clearly marked as medical personnel? Are they actively trying to surrender? Thank you for watching. Again, please share this and help fight misinformation. Thank you for watching. Again, please share this and help fight misinformation. Hey everyone, new Ryan Macbeth t-shirts and hoodies from Bunker Branding are available. I'm going to get the Highmars shirt. What are you going to get, Donald? The Patriot shirt, because I'm a Patriot. It's the best shirt, the biggest shirt. Make 14 tangos great again. What are you going to get, Barack? Let me be clear. I'm going to get a drone sweet drone shirt. What about you, George? I'm going to get a knife hand shirt because they're weapons of mass destruction. What about you, Billy? Oh, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because my presidency always blew up in my face. I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Ronald Reagan, but you're dead. I came back to tell you that no matter our politics, we're all Americans. And we should buy Ryan's hoodies and t-shirts because they pay for the stock footage and licenses that allow him to make awesome content. So come on down to Bunker Branding and buy a Ryan Beth t-shirt or I'll start the bombing in five minutes.